child. I'm parked in front of the Smoothie King and one of y'all cousins is trying to fight in the drive-thru. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all niggas? We can't take you nowhere. She didn't open the door and everything, y'all. Anyway, you guys, this is just a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. You guys, I feel like I didn't put my stories in order like I normally do of how I want to say it. So let's start with the Malia Davis uh, update. You guys know the body of Malia Davis was found. The four-year-old four little girl who had been missing since the ending of April. She was being taken care of by her um, mother's boyfriend while the mother was out of town at a funeral. And uh, the little girl came up missing. Darian Vince. He said that um, originally he said he was kidnapped, him, his little two-year-old boy, and four-year-old Malia. They supposedly let him go and his son, but kept the little girl. But there were all these reports that they had seen him with garbage bag, with the laundry basket, um, on surveillance camera. Um, he had been arrested, actually, because there was bodily fluids um, and the smell of a, of a corpse in a car that he had been driving, but they never had the body of the little girl. Evidently, Vince was speaking to an activist in Houston by the name of Quanell X, and he told him that he ended up dumping the little girl's body in a garbage bag on the side of a road in Arkansas. After Quanell X let the authorities know, they went there, they found the remains of the body because it had been there since April. Of course, it's very, very hot. Um, decomposition, I'm sure, has taken over and the little girl's remains and blood was found in the bag. So, um, this just confirmed what we all knew. We knew he was behind that death. He is saying that he did not kill her and that he would never hurt her. Actually, I think his quoted statement was, nothing bad happened to Malia. Well, obviously, something terrible happened to Malia. She is no longer here. She's dead. It sounds like he's setting up a story for something else happened to her and that he just disposed of the body, that he was not, um, you know, responsible for killing her. Now, they have not um, released any autopsy reports to, you know, determine the cause of death. I guess we'll hear about that later, but as of now, um, her body has been found, and I just can't even imagine as a mother finding, ugh, you know... I don't know why it seems even worse when your child has, you know, like it's something so horrendous as this and being on the side of a road and, you know, the body decomposing, even though I know that happens even when they are buried, but, you know, it's not the proper burial and just uh, the whole thing is just so sickening. People are still saying that the mom might have known something or had something to do with something. Um, people are still side eyeing the mom. I don't know what to make of the mom. I didn't realize that she was out of town. Um, I knew she wasn't there, but anyway, it doesn't even really matter, you guys. The little girl's body has been found, so now we can put her to rest uh, properly um, with what's left. It's just, I just feel so horrible. But prayers up for the family of that little girl. Um, she does have little siblings and, and nobody deserves to just be thrown to the side and left to rot on the side of the road like this. So we'll find out more about the story and I definitely will update you guys. But that is the latest uh, Malia Davis body was found. So what is going on with the Dominican Republic and us Americans going over there and not seeming to make it back? We've been hearing about this happening a lot. Now, the latest story is an American couple from Prince George County, Maryland. I'm hearing more and more about that county. Um, I thought Prince George was in Florida, but it's in Maryland. Anyway, 63-year-old Edward Holmes and 49-year-old Cynthia Day, um, they were found dead in their hotel room after they had been in the DR for five days it was their day to check out when they didn't check out hotel staff went into the room and found them both dead they're saying that they died of respiratory failure both of them okay and that they both had excess fluid on their lungs such a strange story that both of them would die um, from having excess fluid on their lungs they're saying that there was no you know no proof of foul play no 
struggle in the room or anything like that. There was no drugs there. They did have blood pressure medication. I don't know if it was for either one of them or for both of them, but um, yeah, that's, that's what they're saying. Now to make the story even sound stranger is five days before that, another person died at this very same resort. The name of the resort is the Bahia Principe Hotel in Lo La Romana. I might be saying that. I'm sure I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, but anyway, 41-year-old Miranda Shop Werner, she was there with her husband celebrating their anniversary. Okay, now they had just checked in and she went to the little mini bar at the hotel and um, had a drink. And then when she went to her room, her husband said it was the strangest thing. Like she was fine. She was taking pictures and, you know, smiling and having a good time. And the next thing they knew, she collapsed. And by the time he called the hotel staff, that she had died. So we have these three people from the same hotel within a matter of five days. They actually all checked in at the same time. It's just that she died. Miranda died before before the couple did but yeah just crazy so Miranda's family after they heard the story about the couple and found out that it was at the same hotel they decided to contact the US State Department and ask them for an investigation because now they're not sure if there was something fishy going on there and then you guys remember before this happened um, a few months ago, back in March, I believe it was, there was a couple from New York there that was on the way back to the airport. They were leaving the island and their Jeep or whatever drove off the side of the road and into the Caribbean and they both died. Okay. He died immediately and I believe the, the girl ended up dying um, at the hospital later but um all strange like just weird and i even remember that story it was something weird around the story as well when it happened because at first they were saying something else about the couple and then all of a sudden it was it was an accident so yeah i think that you know i think that there's this false sense of security when you go out of you know out of the country or when you go on these vacations you know you're drinking a lot you are around a lot of people I think your defenses are down and you're around a lot of people thinking oh we all having a good time um, but you have really got to be careful I mean it then got to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm almost feeling like well shit <laughs> I, maybe maybe it ain't time to be going to the DR and to you know all these places and I think you you get caught up in wanting to be mixed in with the locals and and just not really aware of your surroundings and what parts of the city that you might be in may be dangerous and but these people this what makes this story even stranger is the fact that they were actually on the grounds of the hotel so it wasn't like they were out with the exception of the couple from new york but it wasn't like they were out and about you know but you also hear stories about people getting kidnapped and you know we've heard about all types of deaths that have happened over the years um, on these vacations and it just makes you be a little bit concerned so um, we gonna definitely keep our eye on this story especially with it being the summertime and a lot of people are about to go on vacation and go to these different locations it is definitely something to be aware of and uh, if the FBI gets involved or you know if the State Department comes up with something of concern then I think we all need to know about this what y'all think about it all of that don't you think that is a coincidence that these same like three people would have died and where did this excess uh, fluid come from I know a lot of times they said that you can still um, drown even if you are no longer in the water but if you were in the water for a long period of time and ingested a lot of water while you were there you can go home you know take have dinner take a shower get in the bed and still drown I mean maybe that could be it but it just that doesn't sound right and I bet you if there was more research done we would come up with even more deaths that have happened over on these islands um, you know while people were on vacation so yeah when I know more you guys will know more I will definitely let you know because that story is really really odd don't you think well, you guys Dwayne Craddock sent his supervisors an email um I believe it was on Monday that said that I want to officially put in my two weeks notice. It has been a pleasure to serve the city, but due to personal reasons, I must relieve my position. A few hours later, Dwayne Craddock went into the municipal 
uh, building that he had been working in for nine years as a civil engineer, went in and shot up and killed 12 of his co-workers and injured five others. And everybody was shocked. They're saying that Dwayne Craddock was, you know, an employee who was in good standing. There were no discipline, disciplinary action that was being taken. You know, he wasn't threatened to lose his job. Um, he was a regular employee who came in, you know, Monday through Friday and as they expected. And, you know, they never knew of any strife or anything that any problem that he may have had. So the shooting comes as a surprise to everybody and um, scary because this will let you know that, first of all, you don't know what people are going through in their lives where they might just have their finger on the trigger. All they need is one thing to push them over that edge. You don't know about people's mental health issues that they may be battling. You go to work thinking that you're going to work your regular schedule, and the next thing you know, somebody is in there shooting up the place. Now, of course, the now that this has happened, um, Virginia, you know, the governor is trying to take different measures to... Get some sort of gun control going on down there. They're introducing universal background checks, requirements that people report lost or stolen guns, which should be a given, right? They're trying to reinstate a, a law that was repealed back in 2012 that would limit handgun purchases to one a month. I just am so floored by this because I'm just like, how many fucking guns are people buying in a month? How many damn guns do you need with the exception of gun collectors? But, I mean, I... I mean, it's. I was reading this and I was like, what? They're also trying to ban assault weapons and related devices such as sound suppressors, silencers. They're saying that that is actually what Dwayne Craddock have, had when he walked into his office and killed all those people. I had no idea that silencers were, that were legal. Okay, they said that he purchased it legally. Why would you even, why would a silencer even be legal? The whole purpose of the silencer is to so that nobody else will know that you are shooting at something. When would be a circumstance when you wouldn't want people to know that you were shooting at something? I mean, I guess if you're hunting. I just, I don't know. I, there's so many things with these gun laws that I just do not understand. The fact that a person can walk into a shop and purchase a silencer... Something is really wrong with that. Like, it seems like you would really need to give an explanation of why you are doing this. And it, it really needs to be some tougher laws in place. But, you know, I'm sorry, you guys, my mouth is hurting again. It, now I'm talking, but these braces, Lord have mercy. We talk about gun laws, gun control all the time. It is like being, uh, it's like a broken record, really. I don't expect anything to come of this. Um, because nothing ever does. And that just seems like a harsh thing to say, but that's really my belief now. I don't know what to do to combat any of this anymore because the lawmakers, those who are in charge, are the ones who want to keep everything the way that it is. They're, they're, they're willing to sacrifice even some kids. And people always tell me, Roxanne, after them kids all got slaughtered, them little babies got slaughtered and nothing happened, nothing will ever happen. And um, I, I really do believe that now. So we'll send up prayers to the victims, the victims' families, that city. Um, these kind of things really put a strain on the whole community because now everybody is on alert and nervous and scared all the damn time. And you know, you don't want to live your life that way. So it's prayers up for everybody. But, you know, it's just so sad to say that it's just par for the courses just happens more and more and more and more these days i'm not even sure what happened to craddock did, did he get killed you guys or did he i'll put on the screen whether or not he survived but if he did survive then he needs to go to jail and y'all know I, i'm an eye for an eye so you killed all of these people then you should be prepared to die as well um, like I said, prayers up for everybody down in Virginia Beach. Hopefully you guys will all recover and walk safely in your communities um, without fear of being gunned down. We need a 
feel-good story. The first hip-hop artist to become a billionaire, Jay-Z. Okay, you guys also know him as Sean Carter. Forbes just announced that he is indeed the first billionaire. I thought that it was Dr. Dre, but then I was reminded that, no, remember Dr. Dre only became half of a billionaire richer, because half of a billionaire, half of a billion dollars richer um, when he was, or however much stake he has in the... Um, um, Beats by Dre with Apple, that whole little union that they had. Um, he had to split that billion dollar number. So he wasn't necessarily a billionaire. But anyway, Jay-Z is actually the first hip-hop billionaire. I don't even know if you can call him a hip-hop billionaire. He is a brilliant businessman. He is an astute businessman. Even Warren Buffett said that he was the next one to look out for. And some nine years later, after he sat down and had lunch with Warren Buffett, remember when we heard about that, he has hit this goal of one billion and here's how he did it he has ace of spades champagne okay that's worth 310 million dollars he has a vast investing portfolio which also includes a stake in uber and that total worth is 220 million dollars he has a joint venture with do say that's his um that his share is worth 100 million dollars he's a major owner of title the music streaming service and his share is worth 100 million dollars he has rock nation um that under that you know, under Rock Nation, he has a man management late um, management company, a sports and entertainment. You know, his music label. That's all under that umbrella, as well as a joint venture with Live Nation. I didn't even know that. So he's part hooked up with the Live Nation concerts that you hear about. That's seventy worth seventy five million dollars. His music catalog is worth seventy five million dollars. His art collection is worth seventy million dollars. And his real estate all over America is worth $50 million, okay? So you add all them numbers up and you come up to $1 billion, which is something spectacular for a rap artist who started out meager beginnings. Jay-Z is a fantastic person to look up to um, and just to know his whole story. Uh, he's come a long way. Congratulations to him for that. And then we also have Rihanna, who is the richest female entertainer in the world according to For Forbes again she's the wealthiest female musician out there she's passed uh, Madonna by 30 million dollars Celine Dion by 150 million dollars and Beyonce by 200 million dollars she's worth 600 million dollars they're saying and um, good for Rihanna y'all know I love Rihanna I think that she is just an unproblematic very smart businesswoman. And I'd be willing to bet that maybe she even got some of her business acumen from Jay-Z. You guys know that he was a mentor to her at one time. And to see her doing it so well, I am just so proud of her. As well as the other women that are on that list. You know, even though we say that Madonna, and I was just like, Madonna is making that fucking kind of money. And you don't even hear much about Madonna. You know, not like you used to. I mean, Madonna is definitely an icon and she's here, right? But... You know, Madonna's out there making her moves still. Um, Celine Dion, Beyonce, it don't even really matter the amount because once you get into these hundred millions, you know, then damn it, everybody is fucking rich at that point. And something to be proud of, all, every single one of them. And then when you just put Beyonce's money with Jay-Z's money, then we talking about more money, more money, more money. But um, just for Rihanna to be a young black girl, um, who has made that kind of money on her own very 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 proud of her okay and she made her money because of her partnership with LVMH oh her fashion label Fenty her lingerie line Savage X Fenty and her cosmetic um, beauty brand Fenty Beauty I didn't even say nothing about her music career in there, huh? Because Forbes didn't even mention her music career. Um, she's making money from her music career, even though that seems to be kind of put on hold. Or she's not, you know, she's busy. So she hasn't been able to get to her music the way that she had been. People are still, like, complaining that she hasn't put her music out. And, you know, every now and then she'll show us that she's in the studio. And, you know, she's just working, like, wait a minute, be patient. Let me just get this other shit out the way because the music ain't making me 600, fucking, 600 million damn dollars, okay? Let's get that 
clear, okay? The music is for play play at this point. I know how it is when you say, you know, you can't forget where you came from. I'm sure she's very, very appreciative because her starting music has gotten her to where she is today. But, um, yeah, I was, shit. Six, that is great, okay? And she living her best life. I just saw pictures of her with her billionaire boyfriend and his family. You know, they're in Italy off the coast having, you know, food on the, you know, yacht and all of this. I'm just so happy for her. So, um, yeah, that is the feel-good story for the day. Both Jay-Z and Rihanna out there doing it, as well as other people. Um, Serena Williams, $200 million, um, richest self-made um, woman athlete out there. Just, you know, just some great things to, 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 to be proud of. Um, we're going to give Rihanna the fist pump of righteousness. I love you, girl. <laughs> you know, keep up with that black girl magic. And um, again, very, very proud of Sean Carter. Uh, Jay-Z to you. Now, speaking of Rihanna, Sephora decided to have a... Um, they closed their stores Tuesday morning, I believe it was, for an hour or two, so that the entire company could attend an inclusivity meeting for everybody. Now, the reason why this was sparked was because SZA, the artist, was in Calabasas in a Sephora store. She was trying to buy her Fenty makeup, okay, her Fenty beauty that I just told you guys about. The employee in there by the name of Sandy thought that SZA was trying to steal, so she called security on her, okay? Wrong move, because uh, when security came and SZA, you know, found out that she was being accused of stealing, which she wasn't doing, she went on to tweet um, to her millions of followers that, um, you know, she had been harassed in the store, and that, you know, damn, can a bitch just buy her damn Fenty Beauty in peace? Well, of course, that is not good business for Sephora, because in today's climate, you know, you that is the last thing that you want to be labeled as is racist. Secondly, it's not good for Sephora because SZA, like I said, has millions of followers that she influences. And it's not good for Sephora because Fenty Beauty is also sold in their stores. They have Rihanna's line in there and really don't want to, I'm sure, don't want to damage that relationship that they have. After this happened, maybe a month or so later, Rihanna sent um, SZA a gift card, told her, Go, girl, go on and get your stuff from Sephora, like, I handled it. Um, and then this is when we heard about this inclusivity uh, meeting that they were having and they were closing their stores. I know most people will say, ah, oh, you know, it's just bullshit or it's just... Um, you know, something that they do to make sure that they make y'all black folks happy, you know, just to, but you have to start somewhere and they really could have just ignored it all together. So I guess they can get a little something for that. Um, but what they really need to do, hire people that are not going to assume that all black people are trying to steal something out of your fucking store. I done been around plenty boosters when I was working in, um, you know, in retail in Los Angeles, we had a lot of people still, and it was not all black. I mean, I worked in Santa Monica, and um, yeah, most of them weren't black. It's always this assumption, and, and many of us who are black, who have been in the stores, you know, we've all at some point in our lives experienced that feeling that everybody is watching us and thinking that we're going to steal something. So the shit is annoying, but uh, they did close their stores for an hour. Now, how do you guys feel about that? Do you feel like, you know, at least they're trying, or do you just think that that's just something just for them to shut folks up? But people also need to hold these companies accountable for the shit that they do. So you guys let me know what you think about that. Um, will you still be buying your Rihanna Fenty Beauty um, makeup from Sephora, or will you just go on and get the shit offline? Or online, I guess I should say. Leave your comments about it below. you guys in quickies black china's reality show remember i told you guys that she's going to have a show actually it's a docuseries is what they're calling it um on the zeus network uh, that is a new network new streaming service that you can pay 3.99 a month and you can uh, see such gym <laughs> docuseries such as the real black china uh, that's coming this summer they have released a clip from the show of her and her mom arguing people are saying that it seems like it's fake what i'll say is it seems like this is probably 
a common type of conversation or back and forth between Black China and um, her mom, Tokyo Tony, and that they just decided to redo something like that on camera. Now it's very clear that they have a toxic relationship, um, whether they acting for the cameras or not. We have seen enough of them off of the shows going back and forth in social media, um, or more so Tokyo just commenting on her daughter, to know that that is a, is a relationship that is not healthy. It, it's just wrong. When you watch the damn clip and Tokyo Tony goes into this whole rant about, you know, I was your mother. I was the only one that took care of you. I'm thinking to myself, like, well, you were her mother. You supposed to take care. What the fuck are we giving uh, accolades? Shout out to Nini. Um, to people for doing something that they are supposed to do. They both need therapy. They both seem like train wrecks to me. Black China is definitely a, a, a result of the environment that she grew up in. Um, and Tokyo might be the result of the environment that she grew up in. I mean, you know, that happens. Um, so I don't know if I... I mean, it, it, it probably was a prepared argument, but shit that they they do all the time so it wasn't like it was a lie it just was as it went on it seemed more authentic but it started off a little shaky like they had to get their bearings but um will you guys be watching the show i, I don't think that i will because i actually do like black china and I, I just don't need to see any more of that kind of carrying on from her okay really wish she wasn't doing the show but i guess she got to make her money some kind of way did you guys think that it was real or did you think it was fake so they're saying that apple at their big conference they had the other day announced that they will be getting rid of itunes and that is because of the overwhelming popularity of streaming services um apple music would be be that for itunes um nobody buys music anymore and i am one of those people i listen to apple music i'll never go on itunes Okay, and I bet you that it's like that for most people. Why would you go on iTunes if you could just stream everything? You pay $14.99. I pay $14.99 for my family program, and um, that is enough for me. So they're going to be phasing it out very soon, and uh, they're going to be replacing it with an app on our phone just simply called Music. And I don't really know how the ins and outs of that's going to be, but um, I guess you can download your music to there if you want. But otherwise no more iPhones and the end no more iPhones child not iPhone no more iTunes and the end of an era right I guess we'll hear more about that app soon but yeah no more iTunes you guys that's weird to me just weird it's been a part of our lives for so long and now it's just going bye-bye shout out to Apollo okay Apollo Nida is it is that his last name he is out of jail now he was sentenced to eight year bid um, back in 2014 but at in March of 2019 this year a judge reduced his sentence by two years which brings us to now um, he is out of jail he is officially a free man well not officially a free man he now is moving into a halfway house in Philadelphia and um, he is going to finish out his sentence there and he should be done by October now they have pictures of him walking down the streets with his fiance uh, Sheridan Al Mufti Okay, who is a real estate agent in Philadelphia, and I'm not sure if he's going to be moving to Philadelphia or how that's all going to go. Um, there were rumors that they thought that he would be on Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I guess that has that all depends on whether or not Phaedra is going to be back on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And um, there was a lot of talk about her possibly coming, but I think I also heard that Candy was putting her foot down about her returning. Um, I don't know how true or false that might be, but if Phaedra doesn't come back to the show, even as just a friend of the show, then there will be no reason for really Apollo to be there. So we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I will, you know, I'm fine with Phaedra coming back. Um, and I think that that would be an interesting story to see with him being in, newly engaged and all that. But, you know, it would be kind of hard for them to introduce him back in as well without Phaedra being there because he's not a wife. His, his fiance is not a housewife, you know, so it's just sort of like, mm, I don't know how they would do that. But I surely would like to, I would love to see the interactions between them three um, and, um, how, how all that goes so 
Yeah, he's out and child at that Apollo. Now the motherfucker been in jail for six years, but he still look good. Oh my God, I'm talking about big muscles and chest and small waist and you know beard, full grown man, just child and you know he he's he is good looking. So. We'll see what happens, though. What, what, how would you guys feel about... I've never asked... Did I ever ask you guys? What do you guys think about Phaedra coming back? I know also that Nene really wanted her to come back, but it's a lot of drama going on with that. I haven't heard anything about Phaedra coming back, though. I haven't heard anything about her being recorded, you know, filming with anybody or anything. So some tell me she's not coming, but... Would you guys like to see Phaedra back? Now, they're saying that Gail King, who was at the top of Wendy Williams' list to, you know, give her bombshell interview, talking about her divorce um, from Kevin Hunter and everything that involved there. Gail King was at the top of uh, Wendy's list to be the interviewer, and Gail King has turned her down. But get this. Gail says that she feels like the, um, the story may be too trashy for morning television. I said, bitch, say what? <laughs> Gail King had an alleged pedophile, R. Kelly, who has such a checkered and colorful past. Uh, we all know his story. How can you have him on your show and say that Wendy Williams is too trashy? I mean, that, that R. Kelly story is the trashiest of the trashy. That surprised me that she would give that reasoning. I was just like, do you not like Wendy Williams, uh, Gail? And, or did you get some back, you know, some flack about that interview with R. Kelly and decided maybe you don't want to do that anymore? But yeah, her reason, was that was shocking to me. Trashy? Girl, that man was jumping up and down and acting a goddamn fool right there in front of your face. I mean, we can it get any worse than that? We'll see. Now, the, the interview is definitely going to happen, and whoever gets it is going to get a whole bunch of views, because uh, Wendy Williams, if you either if you like her or you don't like her, everybody wants to hear the story. So, Gail King, okay, we can just move on to the next interviewer. Who y'all think should do it? And lastly, congratulations are in order to Tammy Roman, who has been made an honest woman. Okay, they say that she married her longtime boyfriend, Reggie Youngblood, last year. August 17, 2018, as a matter of fact, um, when they were in Las Vegas, they applied for a marriage license and they, they married that same day. Um, and ha it has been quiet. It's been on the hush this whole time. Something tells me that the story is about to come out on Basketball Wise. That's about to premiere soon. No, I'm not reviewing it. They went on and leaked this story now because it's about to be on the show anyway. Um, and good for them. You know, I always felt like he really did love her. She really does love him. Um, and, you know, for them to do something quietly like this and just keep, keep it between themselves and not try to blow it up into some, you know, spectacle on TV or social media, you know, the, that makes me feel like that love is real and um, at least realer than some of these other things that we see on social media. So congratulations to the happy couple. guys that's it let me get off of here i'm gonna have to go put some more wax in my mouth oh my god all this talking let me get my smoothie king and get on back to work okay we do this every single week so make sure that you rate comment and subscribe and make sure you come back until next time rock stars bye